Hey, since many of you have asked, I, I'm going to do today a video on uh, overall game of World Conqueror 4. Some tips, some uh, little tour to give an advice. So first of all, this is very important. Now I'm offline, but this is a cloud function that uh, it was not at the beginning when I was playing. It's been added uh, afterwards. But when you are uh, <clears throat> facing any really difficult mission, for example, you can save in the cloud and retrieve the game later on, or you can retrieve it on a different device. Okay, you can choose also here the language. And so you have a four main screen plus the setting where you can set up the, the speed of movement, sound effects, showing the grid, showing the animation of the battle. Okay, everyone has different preference. Then scenario, that's where are all the campaigns. You start with the mandatory tutorial and then you have four sections. Each section is divided into axes and allies, I mean the two fronts, and every mission has a two version, as the normal, but also the hard mode. And they grant you medals, but also in uh, several missions, you can unlock skills. You will see an item with a green circle it means that if you normally is a city, if you conquer that city, you unlock that skill, which later you can use to upgrade the generals. Okay, and also you gain medals. Sometimes if you are stuck, a good advice is to run the mission with the autocomplete. For example, I do Blitzkrieg. And uh, you can uh, activate the autocomplete. Is it... Uh, yeah, you set this on, and you see your troops are now moved by the AI, and you can use the triple arrow to move, them, skip the enemy turn. Okay. The autocomplete is particularly useful for conquest because conquest can give you huge rewards. And so, what you can do, you <clears throat> start a conquest. Ideally, if you have generals, <coughs> put them on the best unit you have, and then run the autocomplete. And the computer will do it for you, and you normally <coughs> should be able to win a few. And so, you get some medals for free. Okay, so of course, the difficulty increases as we go through the World War II Pacific and Cold War. Then, every day, you have on the left, you unlock four advertising videos that provide you medals or uh, resources. Just you click watch and you watch it. But also pay attention to this uh, section with a little cup. It normally is for the achievements and normally you get medals. Like in this case, you see, I just cleared the hard mode for World War II Europe. And so I got 350 medals, which I re just redeemed. And I have another one, and also hard mode for Cold War. Yes, so I got a bunch of medals, as you can see. Okay, um, then we go to Domination. Here, you apply your generals. For example, here the skills are artillery, industrial and military rank. So normally go with your artillery generals. You must have some, and by doing that, let me replace this guy with someone which has good artillery skills. Let's see, Matutin, uh, Meinstein. Not enough. Okay, I don't have enough because this is a very advanced uh, mission. But still, you get 4,000 industry, which is still good enough. Then you can play invasions. There are three levels. They give you 6, 8, or 12 medals. So 6 is the easiest, 8 will be intermediate, and 12 the highest. So I play this, will be a marine invasion. You can see the anchor in the middle and down it's on top. And so in order to play the invasion, you need to have legions. So I will show you later in the other quarter, you need to buy units to play these games. So the enemy has two cruisers and three submarines. I will reply... With summary, I can put 12 units, if you can see on the top 
uh, middle corner and so I do six submarine and then three cruisers I can put one general I put also donuts I normally put it in the submarine and then you fight and you need to destroy them all in the number of turns that they have it okay so it's very easy to use always the surrounding technique it's very useful okay i'm not gonna play the simulation you have fewer invasion by the way simulated on the channel then you have a trade so you may have a lot of one resource and not enough of the others or you may have medals that you don't know how to spend so invest the medals into resources resources are critical to upgrade the armies which in my opinion is much more important than generals you can see in my channel i've done all the missions without generals for world war ii europe and world war ii pacific and it's really thanks to the advanced technology i unlocked okay so you have trade you have five trades you see this one if you invest in metals i can get 22,000 industry which i don't want to do and another one here so um, if after you have done all the trade you close the game and you open it again the five trades will refresh so if you have lots of medals you can quickly build up resources and upgrade very quickly your armies then here you can see which wonders you have not unlocked yet here i have unlocked really almost all of them i'm missing the city of the end and beijing xian okay I just buy and I just unlock the terracotta army, so now I have an extra task per day. And then below here you will have the famous generals. Again, I haven't used this one despite I've unlocked it. But when you start the game, you will have four generals here, which are very good generals. And if you complete the three challenges, you can get them with 40% less medals, which is a bargain. So you can get Rommel for around 2,000. In Konev, these two are great generals. Okay, so that's I think covers this part. Then we go to headquarters. In headquarters, first of all, you will see your generals here. If you want to buy new generals, you go there. You can see there are three tiers: gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, of course, the gold are the best, but also the most expensive. You see, I have a bunch of them. And then uh, you still have a couple of bargains in the silver and the bronze. Let's start with the review. In terms of the gold, the one I don't have, I normally do not recommend them. I mean, the Yamamoto is very expensive, 2800, but is really a superior aircraft uh, uh, general. And the advantage also he has uh, two empty slots, so you can here select the skills which are most appropriate, like a depot shift ship for example very appropriate for uh, uh, navy then um, if i look at um, guderian so that's my favorite in my opinion the best general in the game is a tank general i maximize i added tide of iron which damage 25 point extra when the you're half down so it happens during the mission that your reserve goes down. And so that helps you hitting harder when you are uh, injured. And the most important is rumor. This has a 75% chance to reduce the morale. If you hit a tough general with the good area and a couple of other general with rumor, you paralyze him and then you can kill him with time. And of course, he has then Blitzkrieg, Panzer Leader and Armored Assault maximize marshal and you can add on the top you see this purple square you can uh, upgrade them all the way up so this is the maximum they can reach a health of 205 percent which means if you put guderian on a unit which has a health of 100 it gets a health of 205 okay then uh, the other guys uh, that you don't see the checklist the only one that you could buy is a Rokosowski. It's a decent cost, and he also has a two empty slots. 
he has a shelter, which is kind of useless in my opinion, Tide of Iron, which is okay, and Panzer Leader, which is a critical for the tank. So there are better tank generals, namely Guderian and Rommel, than Rokossowski. Um, Yamashita is a very good infantry, by the way, I never use infantry generals, but if you have to pick one, he will be. Personally, I have a Konev, which is uh, artillery, but also double, there you go, he doubles as infantry. You see, Konev has uh, five uh, stars for infantry, which is okay, but of course, he's an artillery general. Not super fast, only four stars in mobility. I maximize it. He has artillery leader, raider, which is not very useful because it's only for infantry, but also has accuracy, which is critical. And I added the rumor, of course, and explosive. So that allows you to break down a stronghold units or cities. Okay, this is maybe the best artillery general in the game. Uh, and then um, we have, uh, let's say, Donitz. Donitz is a great uh, navy general. He is very fast, you see, five star mobility, maximum navy, maximize. He has a fleet leader, which is a critical skill for a navy. Wolfpack, which can help, and the depot ship. So basically, this is very useful, especially in conquest. In every turn, his health level gets 15 points added back. So a bit like the ambulance in European war. And then I put him rumor and sailor, which then gives him a counter attack when he's attacked at sea. And when you see here this uh, empty. Uh, star spots, so you, you can uh, upgrade it, increase his uh, air, in this case there's a air skill from two to three stars. I don't do it because it's not necessary. Better way to spend it. A Rundstedt is also a good infantry general. If you're interested, again, it's max out to two empty slots, which is, a, but in street fighting, not super useful. Uh, the real light, it's useful because uh, it doesn't let the enemy fight back <clears throat> and elastic defend, not very useful, so... But you can get it really cheap. Here is 1,300 after the 40% discount. Then uh, Rommel. Rommel again is cheap because you can get it also with 40% discount after you unlock. So that's the general, it's a maximum tank. Again, quite slow, only three stars, okay? And uh, he has, in terms of skills, um, so Blitzkrieg, I've added it, with the 60% no fight back, a rumor. And he started with Armor Assault, which is useful. Crossfire, not super useful, but it's okay. And Desert Fighting. Now, Desert Fighting is not, uh, it's only level 2, because I'm supposed to unlock a skill. And I cannot see which uh, which campaign I can unlock the skill. And I maximize the health. The Nimitz is the other uh, best navy. I really struggle to choose between Nimitz and Donitz, who is the best. I normally have a clear ranking for every armor, the best general. So for me in tanks is number one, Guderian. Number two is Manstein, number three, Rommel, number four, Vatutin, but in Navy, be between Nimitz and Donitz, a really close, close call. Okay, now, uh, so Nimitz is uh, 190, so it can be upgraded to 205, and uh, um, it's, uh, I added the, the depot ship and a rumor. On top, he has a fleet leader, his forces, which is not very useful, and camouflage, which again uh, it can help, but it's not a such an important uh, skill. And then uh, Eisenhower, Eisenhower with the 190, this is uh, in-app purchase. Honestly, I wouldn't have purchased again, but I did. And you can buy in-app means you can buy with money from the store. And uh, he is really superb aircraft carrier and also marine, so it's a very versatile unit which makes it very useful. Fleet leader, shelter, which is okay, depot ship, sailor, 
and carpet bombing. So yes, good, good skills. And then the other two in-app general which I purchased are Jukov. Again, if I could go back, I wouldn't have purchased him. Jukov, though, gives you versatility. is excellent both in infantry and artillery, although artillery is his kick. Not too bad, also four stars as a tank. And he has a good artillery skill, artillery leader, accuracy, explosive, a crossfire, and artillery barrage. But it does not have rumor, which is the most important. So, And Meistan is my second tank. It, the advantage of Meistan is speed. Six stars and, of course, tank. And the tank skills are also optimized by the Panzer Leader, Blitzkrieg, Plain Fight, Tide of Iron, and Armor Assault, which are all great skills. Okay, So I'm offline, so I couldn't upgrade the desert skill for uh, Rommel to demonstrate. Okay, so then here you see your general. Some of them have medals. You take it here from collection. As you unlock uh, uh, challenges and achievement, you get medals. I think these medals are random, actually. So you need to be lucky. But, um, you know, for each medal tells you which skill they increase. Like the Revolution Medal, for example, increase the skill replacement by 30% and Machinist by 30%. Or uh, this one increase uh, a Sailor by 100%. So Sailor, we saw Nimitz, he has a Sailor. Isn't it? Or he was Dorit. He has it, right? Sailor. And so we can add him. Okay, that's it. The Conqueror Medal, which is this one. Okay, I demonstrate. You add that, and now you see the, sk the Sailor skill is increased by 60%. Okay, if I remove the medal, it's only 30%. So it's a double. It's, it really pays back. Okay, so pay attention to those medals. Um, so that's about the general. The more you increase level, like I'm a level 47, you add the slots, up to 15 slots you can have for general. Okay, but I didn't add more. Also here, on the bottom left, you see a tank sign. That's the legion. Here you can buy armies that you can then use in invasion. Again, uh, as you go up in levels, you will unlock the different units to buy. Okay, so here again, I can buy uh, the various units. See, I'm offline, so I'm not allowed to activate anything. Um, for tanks, again, super tank, and so on. So at the beginning, invasion are tough because you have just the basic uh, units, like a, a armor car, but some marine already are good enough, and just feel the artillery. A bit of patience, and then this invasion will rack in a lot of medals. Also, the, at the beginning, the invasions are easy, so even if you have low units, it's okay. And then that's the technology. So in the top you see the technology for the various uh, units, so infantry, tanks, artillery. So start uh, ideally to upgrade the artillery and the uh, tanks. These are the two most important units. And normally you can upgrade the defense, so the armor, mobility, and the health, and attack. Okay, and sorry, that's the mobility. Engine is mobility, artillery, attack. And vehicle is the health. And then you have some special skill. For example, damage infantry plus 45, less damage from air attacks. But the most crucial one is, hold on, where is it? This one. 75% chance to attack again after destroying the enemy. Okay, this is really critical. With this, uh, uh, with this skill, you can basically uh, attack all the time the the enemy. Okay. 
So basically when you have uh, um, an enemy almost uh, dead, you kill him and then you have a chance again. Now when this is upgraded, normally it's uh, 100%. Then as you progress, you can unlock buildings. Normally you unlock buildings by progressing in exercise. Every five exercise you unlock, you starting with the broadcast tower, which I never used to be honest. I only use these three, the technology center, which double the technology output, the financial 50% increase of your gold, industrial 50% increase of the industry generated by that city. So you normally you put the financial center in city, which generate at least 60 coins per turn, ideally 80. The technology ideally will be four per turn, but often you have to do it on a city that gives you two because you don't have other choices. Industrial, I rarely use it, to be honest. I always have enough industry. But again, a city which at least has a 15 should be used. In rare case, I use the hospital, which add the 20 units to whatever hospital unit that city gives. You do that in a city which has the hospital sign and gives you at least a 16 units back. So 16 plus 20, you get 36 units. And then here are all the wonders. For each, you see what does it do. So wonders are unlocked in various uh, campaign. You can look on uh, Google. There is a in the European in the Easy Tech uh, forum. There is a, a post that shows all the where you can unlock all the skills and where you can unlock the wonders. The one I are really good that uh, I have are. Let me find it. So like the Red Fort, for example, made a reward of invasion increased by 50%, or Anchor Vat resource task 100. But the one I use really are the, the one that give you daily output. So Borobudur and Chris the Savior give you each daily coins. The Opera House give you industry, the Canada Energy, and the Statue of Liberty Technology. Space Shuttle also technology, but more than the Statue of Liberty. Shishen Itza is also industry. Same as the Opera House, but it's the bigger. So these are the upgraded version. Machu Picchu gives you more energy, 250. And Chris the Redeemer gives you double the money than Borobudur, so 20,000 per turn. Okay. Also, you have wonders, which can be useful for uh, when you upgrade the technology. For example, the Alhambra, it will reduce the cost to upgrade the tanks. So that's very useful. Okay, I think I showed you everything. It's a bit fast, but you can rewatch the video, pause, and go at your pace. And the last thing uh, I want to show is a conquest. In conquest, the same, you have an achievement section where you can click to reclaim your reward once you complete the conquest and uh, um, you know you see here at the bottom this is for missions that you started so mm -hmm. when you want to stop playing you can still come back and play again okay so that's it i hope you enjoyed it and if you like it i will do the same for a european war that's a tip. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I upload daily. Thanks.